Hi, this is Sebastian, I'm product manager for Arturia. This video is about the MIDI Brute 2 and MIDI Brute 2S patch bay. These two instruments share the exact same synth voice, including the patch bay, so we will cover them at the same time. First, let's talk about semi-modular synthesizers. A semi-modular synth is an instrument that offers pre-patched connections between modules. In particular, it ensures that some sounds can be produced without patching a single cable, but that the connection between the various modules can be broken and reorganized the way you find suitable. Minibrut 2 and 2S are semi-modular synthesizers. The pre-patched connections are labeled in blue in the voice area, below the corresponding modulation amount knobs. And they are labeled in blue above the input connectors in the patch bay. Plugging a cable in one of these inputs breaks the routing with the default connection and replaces it with whatever new signal you plug into it. For instance, let's replace the default connection between envelope and filter cutoff and modulate the filter with an LFO instead. The patch bay of Minibrut 2 provides inputs and outputs for different aspects of a synth. Inputs are shown with white text, whereas outputs are dark text on a white background. They are grouped by module, for instance, the trigger input, attack and release time, CV controls, and the output of the AD envelope are next to each other. The beauty of a modular or semi-modular synthesizer is that as long as you plug inputs into outputs, you can connect anything to anything and see what happens. If you wish to use oscillator 2 as the trigger input of the AD envelope, no one will judge you. But still, we can group inputs and outputs by types. Minibrut 2 offers audio inputs and outputs, CV inputs and outputs, gate or trigger inputs and outputs, as well as MIDI to CV outputs. Let's have a look at the ways to use this patch bay to create interesting patches. By default, the ADSR envelope controls the filter, and the AD envelope controls the volume of the synth. One simple way to use the patch bay is to invert those two connections, to use the ADSR envelope on the amplifier and the AD envelope on the filter. To do this, all I have to do is take the output of the ADSR envelope and plug it in the AM input in the amp section. Notice that this connector had the AD envelope as a pre-patch connection, as illustrated by the blue text. Now we'll do the same thing for the filter. I will take the output of the AD envelope and patch it in the FM input of the filter. The AD envelope can loop, which is nice for rhythmic effects. And particularly interesting on the filter. Now that we built this simple patch, let's try to modulate the decay of the AD envelope to obtain a bouncing ball effect. To do that, we're going to use a sawtooth LFO. Now as you can hear, the amount of modulation is too high. We want to attenuate it. Unlike other modulation routings that have a dedicated attenuator, the envelope times do not have their own attenuator. Minibrut 2 offers a number of utility modules that are not pre-patched, but prove handy in some situations. Those are the attenuators, inverter, and VCA. In our case, we are going to use one of the attenuators. Their role is to take a source and attenuate it. The first attenuator is pre-patched to the filter cutoff, the second one to the amplifier. In this case, I want to remove the default connection and use it only to control my envelope time. I will start by taking my LFO1 signal and plug it in the attenuator input. Take the attenuator output and patch it in the AD envelope decay time. Now I can precisely control the amount of LFO on my envelope decay. Now, let's work with frequency modulation. By default, the FM knob in VCO1 controls the amount of FM from VCO2. This is a great way to achieve inharmonic and complex tones. In this case, I would like to build a bass sound that would have some FM at the beginning and would end with a constant pitch. This kind of emulates the inharmonicity that are obtained at the start of a note when plucking a string. 
Again, I need to use one of the utility modules for this patch, in this case, the VCA. What I'm going to do is control the amplitude of VCO2 with a decaying envelope and use that as a frequency modulation source for VCO1. So let's patch VCO2 output in the VCA input 1. Let's use the ADSR envelope as the VCA control. And let's take this VCA output and connect it to VCO1 FM input. Let's use a triangle waveform for VCO1, a sine wave for VCO2 to obtain a tone with few harmonics, and let's play with the relative frequencies of both VCOs to get a sound we like. As you can hear, we can also play with the envelope decay time and FM amount to get various interesting tones. So I hope this shows how powerful this patch bay can be. These were just a few examples on how to use it, but the best way is to explore yourself. Thank you for watching.